It's one thing to dream of no speed limits and no traffic jams, as in these action video games. The world is a racetrack, and they simply need a place to go. Go! One thing to imagine pavement with only fast lanes, as in the movie The Fast and the Furious. Move fast. Or these ads. You oh, move fast. Fastest car. I will always be involved in, in racing. This is something else. It's no fantasy. These amateur videos obtained by Dateline were shot by passengers riding in cars pushing 120 miles an hour or more. Those are real commuters who can have no idea they are in a street racer's home movie in broad daylight on a highway around Washington, D.C. Communicating with a simple wave of the hand, flash of a turn signal, or perhaps even a wireless email offering to meet at a prearranged location, these racers turn public pavement into a private, death-defying joyride, with you as part of their realistic scenery. Or in some cases, a fatal obstacle, as when a pedestrian was mowed down by street racers in Florida, a state where police say there's a fatal highway accident every three hours, with more and more of the crash scenes looking like this one. You might say that what's going on here is reminiscent of the 60s muscle car grease monkey days of your father, but you'd be wrong. New technology has supercharged the old-fashioned hot rod. For not much money today, you can modify an inexpensive car called a tuner and create a virtual rocket. But it's got to be fast. Everything's got to be fast. A car that drives close to the way these virtual video game cars speed through imaginary streets, or in the movies. Except these streets are real, and unlike in some commercially available video games, you don't get points for breaking the law, except perhaps in your own mind. I need to do it. I need to race. He's not one of the racers from the Washington, D.C. area. Greg Leone does his driving on the streets of Southern California, a state where the number of tickets for driving over 100 miles an hour has tripled in the last decade. Do you ever go the speed limit? Not really. Greg is 27 years old and lives with his mother, working every day to find just the right component, make the right adjustment to make his car fly. It's easy to buy power. A couple grand, two grand. I can, I can make my car 300, 400 horsepower. Easy. Dude, don't be stupid. Easy. Like a guy sticking a speedometer needle all the way to the right, topping out accelerator at the max. This whole thing that's happening on the street, it's bigger than the video games. It's bigger than anything. And it's lining Sean Murphy's pockets. His company, Techademics, in Southern California caters to the next generation of Greg Leone's, who have ready cash, a driver's license, and are looking for a high-res upgrade to the video games they've played and the racing movies they've seen. Right now, there's 10,000 kids getting their driver's licenses that have watched Fast and the Furious that are ready to go. Hardworking kids who supply racing home video to Sean. Techademics is a welcome market for a network of fast drivers with cameras on the dash. The company strings together clips it obtains for its hottest selling product, the mischief line of street racing movies. There's mischief, mischief destroyed, mischief 3000, and of course, the girls of mischief. Mischief, which apparently means as long as you have a disclaimer at the top, when it comes to cars, nearly anything goes. It's something that, that an average person can sit down and watch and get that feeling of, oh my God, this is what it's like. To you know? break the law. Well, you know, not a, a lot of it's breaking the law. This is what it's like to get sideways. That's right, getting sideways. Think parallel parking with a heavy dose of burned rubber. Getting sideways is a, is a, real, is a technical racing maneuver, actually. So you get sideways maybe once a day. If you have a 350 horsepower car and you don't get sideways every once in a while, you should be shot, you know? I mean, this is, this is Americana. But parking lot stunts are not the problem. It's high-powered anarchy on the streets and interstates. <laughs> Do the cops have any idea this is going on? I think the cops are scared, and I think the cops are a little angry. Are we scared? No. Are we angry? Yes. But the Florida Highway Patrol isn't just getting mad at street racers. They're getting even, under the hood anyway, 
by deploying new unmarked high-performance vehicles like this Black Mercury Marauder, capable of speeds near 140 miles an hour. Designed to track down racers on the interstates, those they catch could face jail time. But the cops concede they still can't really compete with a small engine tuner car hopped up with exotic modifications that can push the engine to warp speed. What does an accident scene at those kind of speeds look like? It's horrific. You get out there, sometimes these cars are completely disintegrated. Disintegrated? Disintegrated. Florida State Trooper Lieutenant Julio Pajon has visited too many of these accident sites, like the one last year, in which a 16-year-old driver challenged to race by two other cars lost control and slammed into a concrete light pole. Injury and death, Pajon worries, are the only reality checks for speed-addled racers. <laughs> That's one way to pass somebody. So they're living in their own video game on real interstates with real everyday drivers. In many cases, they are. And are the lines blurred even more by car ads like this that fuse what's real and what's not? Don't let the needle-pushing T5 turbo performance mess with your mind. These people see that and they want to have the same thing, and it doesn't work. Because in real life, you don't have a reset button in your car. You can't reset life. Once you crash, you die, that's it, it's over. Game is over. Pajon thinks it's almost impossible to convince young drivers who have experienced the thrill of racing to stop his hope talking to parents. It's an approach which might not get very far with Greg Leone's mom, who has hit triple digits on the speedometer with her son at the wheel. Do you worry with this culture of street racing and the kinds of risks that, that people take that your son's going to end up in some driver's ed movie one of these days? 150 you know, miles an hour, that's pretty ugly and I unforgiving. I have a friend whose son died in a plane. Uh, he teaches flying, he loves flying since he was a little boy. And you know what she said? He died doing what he loved to do. And these, this, this, like I say, this is the passion. A passion that fuels the search for more street thrills, apparently. What's canyon racing? That's the next evolution of street racing. You're I scaring mean, me a little bit. Really? Yeah. Picture this. Uh, empty canyon road. Just windy roads for days. Probably 100 or more cars parked at the top of this, top of this mountain pass. And in groups, they head down the mountain pass. And just, just, I mean, there's like 300 foot cliffs. And these are the windiest roads with the least margin for error. Exactly. And that's, to me, is probably a little more dangerous than the stuff on the freeways because there's families on, you know, their weekend vacations, you know, cruising through the canyon. And then here comes 80 import cars on a drift mission. We haven't filmed any of this stuff yet, but we probably should. That's fine. We get the picture. The only antidote to street racing that racers and cops agree on is to provide legal races on sanctioned tracks. But there are very few of those open to the public. And in a world awash in fast cars, hot movies, and even hotter home racing videos, it's hard to imagine how the street racing genie is going to be put back in the bottle. The